calculating capacitive resistive DC circuits. In this presentation, we're gonna be looking at calculating stored charge. We're gonna look at calculating the voltage and the current values in an RC DC circuit while it's charging. And we're also gonna calculate some values in an RC DC circuit while it's discharging. Well, let's get started. First thing we wanna have an idea of is how we are going to calculate the stored charge of a capacitor. So here's my capacitor, two terminals. And this capacitor we know is going to have a capacitance. And capacitance is measured in farads, which is represented with an F. Now, if we wanna know how much charge charge it can store, a capacitor stores charge, right? And because it stores charge, we should be able to calculate that because charge is actually going to be measured in coulombs. Oof, man, remember that word from way back in level one, coulombs. Charge is measured in coulombs. And that is represented with a C in its measured value. So coulombs is a massive amount of electrons. That's really all it is. So a whole bunch of electrons is what a coulomb represents. So we could say one coulomb equals, and I don't know what the exact value of electrons is, and frankly, I don't care. But let's just say one bazillion electrons. We'll see officially that's how many it actually measures. Good stuff. All right, so next, how are we going to calculate the total amount of capacitance uh, and the stored charge in the capacitor? Well, we need to use this formula here. Q is equal to C times V is in Victor, which means we need to know the volts of the circuit. We need to know the capacitance of the capacitor. And we will then calculate the Coulombs of charge. So capacitance will be in farads. and charge will be in coulombs. So if we wanted to do a full calculation, it's actually quite simple. So here's our first example. Let's say I've got an 80 microfarad cap and I connect it into a 200 volts source. When it's fully charged, the amount of of charge that we could quantify is calculated like this. Well, we need to take the coulombs, or sorry, the, the farads and convert it from micro farads, because right now it's in micro, convert it into farads. And so micro represents six decimal places. There's a number of different ways you can convert a value like this. Sometimes people like to move the decimal like this zero point, and then I got to count up my decimals. One, two, three, four, five, and then six would be here, right? So it could be this. Or you can enter it into your calculator a little bit different because sometimes people screw up the number of zeros, the last zeros, tedious, I hate tedious stuff. So instead you could do this, 80 times 10 to the negative six, and you could enter that in your calculator. Some people find this uh, is a little bit more straightforward and there's less chance of you cocking up the uh, calculation. Anyhow, either method you take, I'm gonna just simply stick with this one, 0 0.00008 multiplied by the voltage, 200. So enter it in our calculator, 0 0.12348 eight times 200 gives me 0 
0.016 C coulombs of charge. Could I convert this to a different form? Yes, for sure. We could go to milli coulombs. So it'd be 1, 2, 3, 16 milli coulombs, right? Milli, we know milli represents three decimal places. Let's do one more example. Two. Second example, I got a one farad cap. It's in a car stereo, because I love that thump thump. Who doesn't? Gotta love it. One farad cap. I'm going thump thump at the stop sign because that shows everyone I am very cool and I need to have a one farad cap in order to do this without my lights dimming, which is uncool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate how many farad or how many coulombs of charge would we have stored in this capacitor for my thumpity thump. And I would take one times 12, which would then equal 12 coulombs worth of charge, a significant amount of charge. All right, let's talk about calculating with time constants. So in a RC DC circuit, we'll say calculating time constant values. Good stuff. All right, so when we're calculating in DC, remember, it doesn't matter if we're talking about an inductive resistive or a capacitive resistive, we have an exponential curve. And this exponential curve is divided into five equal time slots. So one, two, three, four, five. So time constant one, time constant two, time constant three, time constant four, and time constant five. When we're talking about our C circuits, so resistive capacitive circuits, that means that we have a calculation for time equaling the resistance times the capacitance. So this would represent one time constant. one time constant, which means if we wanted to know the total time in the same way that we dealt with an exponential curve with a resistive inductive circuit, we're gonna do the same thing here. T or one time constant times five will equal the total time. Now the total time for what? It's a little bit different with a capacitive circuit the total time in order for us to either fully charge or fully discharge a capacitor. So it's the time to fully charge a capacitor or the time to fully discharge a capacitor. Now, when we start discussing the amount of uh, current value that's going to be in the circuit, that will be a product again of the resistance. So let's just do a quick calculation just to make sure we remember how to do this. Let's say we've got a 20 micro farad capacitor and a five ohm resistor. So it looks like this. And what we can calculate is simply the time, the time it takes in order for this to fully charge. And then if I were to remove this source and put a, a wire just across, how much time it would take to fully discharge. So all we need to do is calculate the value for one time constant. So one time constant would be equal to, remember it's 20 microfarads, so I'm gonna use 20 times 10 to the negative six, because there's a less, there's less likely chance of me screwing up the calculation this way. And I multiply that by five. What it leaves me with is 0 
seconds. That's one time constant. Total time would then be equivalent to this value multiplied by five. So 0 0.0001 times five equals 0 0.0005 seconds. So not too complicated, not too complicated at all. So this would be the total time for us to fully charge or fully discharge this capacitor. All right, well, let's take a look then at how we calculate the voltage and the current values inside a capacitive circuit. So let's see, volt and amps in RC. It's gonna be a little bit different when we're dealing with capacitance because we are gonna talk about both the charging and the discharging and both the voltage and the current. So what I'm gonna do is just separate this into two. And I'm gonna say, this is the charging side. And this is the discharging side. And what we're gonna be looking at is both the voltage and the current. And so what I'm gonna do is sketch four basic diagrams four exponential curves. So I'm gonna do one here, one here, and then over on this side, one, two. Fantastic. All right, so we know that each one of these is going to have five time constants. There's, a, there's no point, I'm not gonna sketch those in because we already know that's gonna be true. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sketch for you what the actual uh, curves will look like so that we can start identifying some similarities. And then we can also start identifying the differences and, and make it a little bit easier for ourselves on, on uh, calculating the values. So when I first charge the capacitor, let's, uh, let's do a, a graph for, Let's do the top graph of volts. So I'm gonna put a V here and current. V and current, there we go. So when I first start charging a dead capacitor, is the voltage gonna start at zero or is it gonna start very high? So think of it as a dead battery. When you first hook it up, what's the voltage? Well, the voltage is very low, isn't it? So it's quite simple. There is only two curves that we can possibly look at. We can look at an increasing curve or we can look at a decreasing curve. So this one's an increasing curve. Wow, this is like the world's worst marker. Fantastic. Oh, there we go, that's a little better. So the voltage value is gonna start very low and it's gonna be an exponential curve until it finally reaches full source voltage. So I'm gonna put a little note here and say, this has reached source voltage. So equal to source voltage. What about the current? What's, what's the current gonna do? Remember, you connect a dead battery to the source, what happens? Well, the current starts at zero, but it spikes. Zip. Oh man, I got another world's worst marker here. I was gonna use colors, but obviously that's not gonna work very well. And it then exponential curve. Oh, wow, that's fantastic, isn't it? Look at that color, you can, you can totally see it. Okay, so I'm gonna use black for current. The current value starts at zero, it spikes up to its maximum value, and then it's another exponential curve going down to zero. So this, zero amps.
Now let's take a look at this, this item here. That's the maximum current. And that's sort of equivalent to what we refer to as a steady state current in a RL DC circuit. This, the maximum current that will flow, is going to be determined by the resistance of the circuit. Remember, R, that's the resistance of the circuit, not the capacitance, right? So when we're dealing with a capacitive resistive circuit, it's the resistance that will determine this peak value. All right, let's go over to the other side, discharging. When I discharge a capacitor, what are we gonna see for the voltage? Is it gonna be very low, like zero, or is it gonna be very high, like equal to the source voltage? And I agree, it's gonna be equal to the source voltage because we have just charged the capacitor up. We are now discharging a capacitor. That means that we are starting here, and we're starting at that value of voltage that is equivalent to the source voltage. Look, I can just barely coax out enough red. So where do we start? We start at a value equal to source voltage. And then what happens to the voltage as we discharge it? We go down to zero volts. What about the current? What's gonna to happen to the current? It's actually gonna do the exact same thing. It is in reality going to be down on the bottom portion of my graph and that's only because of the direction of current flow. So really, it's going to start here and it's gonna go down. It's gonna go all the way down and then it's going to slowly work its way back up. And so really, for current value in a DC circuit, although I realize that it's not entirely accurate, what we can do is say, in reality, it will do this, spike to its max value. and then decrease to zero. So this would be I max, and this would be zero amps. It's, been, it's an exponential curve and it's decreasing, right? So sometimes what you will see is this presented like this. And the only reason for that is because it's easier to draw on the top than it is on the bottom. The calculation is exactly the same. The same calculation. This is a decreasing exponential curve. This is a decreasing exponential curve. So the calculation is done the same. So where is the current? The current technically starts down here and sweeps down to zero. I'm just gonna go here, it goes to peak value or max, and then again, decreases down to zero. So this is I max. How is it calculated? Exactly the same way, I is equal to E over R. And what's this? This is zero amps. So really, what you have to do is be able to recognize when we have an increasing and when we have a decreasing value. When we have an increasing and when we have a decreasing value. So increasing values in RCDC circuits increasing values would be something that looks like this, right? Like that, that's an increasing value. And this would be for what? Well, look back on our previous page. Increasing values would only be for voltage
when charging. Voltage across the capacitor when it's charging. Every other measurement we're going to do is actually a decreasing exponential curve. Like this. A decreasing exponential curve is the I when it is charging. The voltage when it is discharging. And also the current when it is discharging. So what I'm attempting to do here is show you that there are similarities so that when we go to do calculations, it's going to be simple. You need to know how to do an increasing exponential curve, which we already know how to do a calculation for from RL circuits. The only additional one we need to now know is how to do a decreasing exponential curve. So let us simplify. I'm all about simplification. I lead a simple life and I want you to do a simple calc because there's no point in spending hours and hours and hours and hours learning all the hundred different ways of calculating things in DC circuits. Let's just do the one that makes sense. So for increasing values, let's just review what that calculation looks like. Increasing values is like this. We know that there are five time constants. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And we know that we can calculate this value is equal to max value bracket one minus E to the negative TC, which was our time constant value, right? And then we also knew that the percentages, the percentages that we would see here would be 63.2%, 86 86.5, 95%, 98.1, and finally 99.4. So this calculation will work for a capacitive DC circuit. And the only calculation we're gonna be using it for is voltage, right? So in an RC DC circuit, we're gonna use this calculation to determine the voltage during a charging cycle. The other exponential curve is the one that we have not done a calculation for yet. So let's look at that one. This one, again, we've got our exponential curve, looks like that, there's our graph thing. And here is our value decreasing. And we've got five time constants. One, two, three, four, and five. the percentages will not be the same as what we saw before, because now what we're looking at is a decreasing value. And so that's a little bit different. And I suppose if you wanted to memorize the percentages, you certainly could. 36.8% decrease from the peak value here. The next one down would be decreasing by another 13.5% or it's 13.5% of the original maximum. The next one would be 5%. It's 5% of the maximum. 1.9%. 1.9% 1 
1.9% of the maximum. And finally, time constant five, 0.6% of the maximum. Beyond time constant five, we would say it's pretty much 0% or zero. In order to accomplish this calculation, what we're going to be doing is calculating the value by again taking the max value bracket e to the negative tc. That's not much different than the previous calculation, is it? All we've done is we've removed one minus. One minus is not in this calculation and that's because it's a different correlation between the value change. So now, this calculation here, what will it be used to determine? Well, in an RC DC circuit, it's going to be used to calculate the volt at discharge, the amps at discharge, and finally the amps at charge. So remember, the whole purpose of this calculation is to determine what the value is, so volts or amps, at whatever time constant that you want, right? Time constant one, two, three, four, five. That is where we put in our time constant number. Remember this, E to the negative TC. So let's do a calculation or two, just to remind ourselves as to how the process works. Okay, so let's say we've got a capacitor and a uh, resistor, and I'm going to draw the capacitor there and resistor, and then we're gonna have a source And we're also gonna have a switch so that we can do both calculations. So this is a three-way switch. And it can either be connected to the source or the three-way switch can connect above. This would be the discharge path and the below one would be the charging path. So it is going to be a, oh, let's see, uh, a value of capacitance. Let's choose something simple. Simple, simple, simple. I like small values. So let's use a value of 500 microfarads for the capacitor, 15 ohms for the resistor, and 20 volts DC for the source. The first calculation we're going to do is for the charging of the circuit. So the charging of the circuit would have the switch in this position here. And what we want to know is pretty much everything. We want to know uh, the time as well as the voltage and current values. So let's start with the time. The time of one time constant. So T is equal to R times C. R times C is 15 times 0 0.0005, which gives me a time of 0 0.0075. So what I've done here is I'm taking uh, my 15 ohms, 15 ohms, and I'm multiplying it by my capacitance, and I'm moving one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places. So that means 0 0.0005. 15 times 0 0.0005 is 0 0.0075 seconds, which means 
total time is equal to one time constant times five, which means 0 0.0075 times five. 0 0.0375 seconds total for us to accomplish this process. So that means approximately everything that we calculate will happen within 37.5 milliseconds. Not very long. Okay, so first step, let's calculate the value of voltage when this capacitor is charging. So we know that the value of voltage for this particular capacitor is going to be a rising value. So I'm going to just put a little note here and say this is charging. So in order for us to work out the value of voltage at each of my time constants, I need to know what I'm starting at. What is the value of voltage that we are expected to get to? And that would be the maximum. The maximum voltage is equivalent to the source voltage. So in this case, it's 20 volts. Once I know that, then I can put it into my calculation and remember what type of curve is this? Is this an increasing or a decreasing exponential curve? And we know that for capacitors in DC, the only one that is increasing in value is the voltage on charge. And that means that we are using this formula, V at the, whichever time constant is equal to V max one minus E to the negative TC, which is our time constant that we want to calculate. So that means we've got time constant one, and that would be Vmax 20, one minus E to the negative, well, which time constant is it? One, close bracket. So remember, when you do this calculation, you need to ensure that you put the brackets in. So 20, open bracket. How do I get this E thing? Well, first I do negative and then I do second function, in button, and then I put in the exponent negative one. So I use this button at the very bottom, negative, negative, and then one, and then close bracket. Equals, oh, great example, Dave. 20, close bracket, one minus second function, in negative one, I get 12.64 volts. So then we can do this calculation for each one of the time constants. So time constant two, one minus e to the negative two. To the negative two gives me 17 point two nine volts time constant three same thing 20 bracket one minus e to the negative three that gives me 19 volts notice a steady incline in the value of voltage time constant four one minus e to the negative four 19 six and finally the last one Time constant five, we should be almost at source voltage. And we got 19.86, so we're almost there. So for our rising values on charge, this is what we would want to see. A steady incline in the voltage value across each one of the time constants. So then what about the current? The amps. during charge. All the amps during charge, let's look at the curve. It's gonna be a little bit different, isn't it? It's gonna start at its maximum and then slowly peter off to nothing. 
So what would be the maximum current that we would expect in this particular circuit? Well, the maximum current is gonna be the value dictated by Ohm's law. So I is equal to E over R, which means 20 volts divided by 15 ohms. So 20 divided by 15 gives me a value of current of 1.33 amps. This would be the max. 1.33 amps. So let's write that over here. Max equals 1.33 amps. Now let's use the calculation that we just looked at on the previous page in order to work out the value at each one of the time constants. So I at whichever time constant we wish is equal to I max bracket E to the negative TC or time constant. So time constant one is equal to 1.33 bracket E to the negative one. And so I'm using the same process in my calculator, but I'm simply not putting in the one minus, right? So when I calculate this value for the amperage, I get a really huge drop in the first time constant, which is what we're expecting, right? That first drop should be around 36.8%. So time constant one is equal to 0 0.47 amps. That's a huge drop. Time constant two is 1.33 bracket E to the negative two. Time constant two is 0 0.17 amps. Time constant three is 0 0.06 amps. Time constant four is 0 0.02 amps. By time constant five, we should be at almost what? Almost zero. And so when we do the calculation, 0 0.008 amps, that is pretty much zero, isn't it? It is almost zero. So that would be for the capacitor charging. Now, what would be the difference for the capacitor discharging. So this is for the capacitor charging, fully charging, the entire um, value being charged up to whatever the source voltage was and the current dropping down to zero. What if we were to do this calculation discharging now? Okay, well, let's take the same diagram. And now let's do discharging for this particular scenario. So discharging, well, discharging is going to be a little bit different, right? Because we need to now consider what's going to happen with the volts and the amps. So what values are going to be the same for charging versus discharging? Well, the time, time's going to be the same, right? Time constant, all of that's the same. What about the current? The current should also be the same when we're discharging the circuit should be a maximum of 1.33 amps. So for discharging, for discharge, it's actually a little bit more simple because when we're discharging, the only thing that we, or the only calculation equation that we need is one that dictates the result of a decreasing exponential curve. And that means that we are using our calculation of value equals the max bracket E to the negative TC. That's the only equation that we're gonna use through this. So what that means is that now, let me shift around my page here. There we go. All we need to know is what is the max voltage and what is the max current? Well, the maximum voltage in this circuit is the source voltage. It's been charged up to 20 volts. So now that is the maximum. What about the current? 
it's the same thing. The current value, the maximum current, is equivalent to Ohm's law value calculated with the resistance, 1.33 amps. So now, take a look, there's really only one uh, series of numbers that I have to calculate. So I'm going to do the voltage first. So I'm gonna do uh, V at the time constant is equal to V max, bracket E to the negative TC, which means at time constant one, V max 20 volts, E to the negative one, gives me a value of 7.35 volts. Time constant two is equal to 2.7 volts. Time constant three is 0 0.99 volts. Time constant four is 0 0.36 volts. And finally, time constant five, we've almost reached zero, haven't we? which is a fully discharged capacitor, 0 0.13 volts. What about the current? Well, wouldn't the current use this equation? I at time constant is equal to I max bracket E to the negative TC. I'm pretty sure it would. And is that not exactly the calculation we just used when we were calculating the value of current at charge? And the answer is yes, it is. See, we used this calculation to determine the value of current at each one of these time constants. And so what you're gonna find is that when we do these calculations, when we're doing charging and discharging, the current values will be identical. So what that means, I'm gonna put a note here. This is gonna be the same as charging. So there's really no need for us to calculate it again. It's important to realize that it's the same as charging. The current is going to be a decreasing exponential curve either way, if it's charging or discharging. So the values are gonna be identical. There is no need to go through and calculate them once again. So this has been a overview of the uh, entire process for us to calculate values in a DC resistive capacitive circuit. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you on the next one.